in this holy temple that all the earth keeps silence before him will you stand with us let us call upon the holy and righteous name of jesus eternal god our father we thank thee for another day's journey one that's been coming since the dawn of creation one we certainly won't ever see again now god we need you in this place like never before mountains are hard to climb valleys reach down low we need you to lift us up where we belong in the name of jesus Oh God, if there be any sick among us, we pray for healing now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you've already done and all you're going to do. Now move in this place, up and down the aisles, oh God. Heal, deliver, and set free in your precious name. Look on our seniors now. Keep them safe in the name of Jesus. Bless our children, God. Bless this community. Then, Lord God, we need you to touch our pastor in the name of Jesus. Don't forget about his companion like I know you can and believe you will. Oh God, bless them like never before in the name of Jesus. God, have your way in this place place look on every preacher preaching thy word bless them in the name of jesus every church to open in your name let it be an opening according to your will and your way now god we take authority in your name today over every witch and warlock in the name of jesus lord bless your place today in the name of jesus have your way in this house, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, look on the speaker of the hour. O oh God, bless him like never before and down with power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we trust you for all things. Look on them today in the name of Jesus. Bless our community like never before. Look on this country. O oh God, how we need you now. Speak unto our hearts and minds. When you do these things for us, God will give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. And all God's people say it. Amen. You may be seated. I am so satisfied. I Okay, the first act of worship is to give our tithes and offerings. And if you have not given your tithes and offerings, will you please raise your hand and let the ushers come by and they will pick it up for you and take it back.
Our Father, our God, we just want to thank you and bless you for this day. Father, we thank all the prisoners that have given the tithes and offerings, and those that have not given, maybe the next time. But we thank them for being here to worship you and praise you. That is the most important. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. <laughs> We're experiencing technical difficulty with the announcements. We're going to ask that the choir would give us another selection. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. Service must go on.
this morning by various means truly the Lord is in his holy temple and let all the earth rejoice before him I'm Reverend Dr. Anthony J. King Sr. I'm one of the associate ministers here 
at Chesterfield, and it's truly our honor to be before you this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all praise, honor, and thanks. We thank you, Lord, because when we woke up this morning, we realized that it wasn't on our own will and accord. We realized, Lord, you watched over us all night long. You let no hurt, harms, or danger come upon us. Lord, you, you continue to feed us with your word, and you continue to let us feel your presence. We ask you, Lord, to continue to forgive us of our sins, whether by thought, word, or by deed. We pray for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. We pray for those, Lord, that are in the hospitals, undergoing surgeries, recovering from surgeries, various illnesses and diseases. We pray, Lord, for your healing touch. But Lord, just in case they don't feel the touch, we just know your word will do the job. We pray, Lord, for those who are homeless, that doors will be open and they can come in from the elements. We pray for those that are hungry, that they will be fed both spiritually and physically. We pray for every church that's open in the name of Jesus Christ, where you are being edified, glorified, and souls are being saved. We continue to lift up our political leaders locally, nationally, internationally to seek, your, to seek your face, your wisdom, and your knowledge as they govern the people. And then, Lord, we just ask you to continue to, continue to lead us in the pathway that you have chosen for us. Lord, we ask for those that are in bereavement that your reign of joy and peace will come upon them and fill them with your spirit. Now, Lord, we ask you to not only have your Holy Spirit in this place, but let your Holy Spirit fall afresh upon me. We render this prayer unto you, and we also thank the angel and the pastor of this house, Reverend Dr. J.R. Matthews, a chosen laborer and a faithful servant. Bless his family. Bless this waiting congregation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, sisters, the Lord has allowed me to once more again stand in this holy place to deliver a word that is not mine, but is his. And I would ask you if you would turn your Bibles to Matthew the 13th chapter, verses 3 through 9. Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 3 to 9. And if you can, rise to your feet. And I have to confess something to you that serving 20 years in the United States Army, every time they raised the flag and let it down, I was standing. It ain't because I wanted to, because that was the honorable thing that we are to do. Amen. And every now and then, I still pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I had to, <laughs> had to, amen. amen. Reading at the Matthew, the 13th chapter, and at verse 3, and it reads as thus. And he told them many things in a parable, saying, A sower went out to sow. Verse 4, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Oops, verse 5, yes. other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, and since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Yes, sir. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who had ears... Let him hear. Thus is the reading of God's word for the people of God. All praises be to God. You may be seated. As a subject and as a thought, the seeds of life, 
the seeds of life. In verse 3, it reads, He told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. A parable is a usually short story that illustrates a moral attitude or a religious principle. Here is Jesus Christ telling this parable about the sower, the farmer, who went to plant some seeds. Verse 4, and, he, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. When the farmer surveyed the land to determine where to plant the seeds, the next step is to till and plow the land. Yes, sir. Then make rows, but put down fertilizer, then spread the seeds between the rows. According to our resident farmer and archaeologist, Deacon J.D. Bryant, what you do, what you should do as the seeds are spread, there are pathways made where the farmer walks or the tractor rolls on. This is done so as not to press the seeds into the pathway or between the row where the seeds are planted. Furthermore, seeds are dead. I'd have to look around and see how many folks was catching that. Seeds are actually dead. When you, when, you, when you buy a pack of seeds, whether it's for flowers or for produce, some collard greens, some cabbage, some mustards, uh, some turnips, some whatever you decide to put out there, when you get that pack of seeds, in the pack, they're dead. D-E-A-D. They don't begin to enjoy life or experience life or life comes into them until they're what? Poured out of the packet, put down in the soil, and some got a water. Yeah, I know we depend on rain, rain a lot of times, but, but, but sometimes if it don't rain, then you got to water it. Yes, sir. You got to water the seeds. We, 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 uh, when you also look at the pack of seeds, it, it, it has a, a, a picture of what the seeds could be. Get, get it get it real good now. Because the pack of seeds has a picture. Now when you pour the seeds out, that ain't the picture. Hey! The seeds don't look like the pack until they've been watered, nourished, amen, and you, and, and, and every now and then, <laughs> you got to talk to them. Hey! Don't, don't think I'm crazy when I... I Look, look, my wife is the one to take care of the flowers. And I tell this story, and I, I got to not tell too many stories, uh, but, but the only plan I had as a soldier was a cactus. It, 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 but it was a pretty cactus. I don't know the name of it. I just liked it when I saw it and I bought it, and it had a little pink bulb on top. I didn't worry much about that cactus because you don't have to water cactus, but every now and then, and that's exactly how I watered it, every now and then. I tell you that because sometimes, just sometimes in our lives, we will run across cactus, yes, but it still needs water. Verse 5, other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. My first description of a seed is a wayward seed. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all know where I'm going now. When you say wayward, y'all start looking around at some, you may not look around nobody in here, but you think about some folks that you know. Might be in your family and in your basement. Well, they don't have many basements here. So, <laughs> right, right. 
in one of them extra rooms in your houses. Amen. You say, we, I'm going to church, and they turn over and say, go ahead. That's right. <laughs> Not so in my house. I remember it was eight children, eight of us. And my father was the preacher. And the thing that I remember the most was that when he rolled out, all eight ducks was in the car. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we lined up going out. Uh -huh. yes, sir. In that station wagon. I don't think they make them anymore, but <laughs> my dad was the first one there to open the church. And this is the part that gives me sour grapes and the taste in my mouth. Was the last one to leave. Well, sir. All them people in the church, trustees, deacons, and other ministers. But he took that as his ministry. And because that was his ministry, it was our ministry. Yes, sir. <laughs> we was the janitors, yes, sir. <laughs> the flow sweepers, the picker uppers. And then when he locked the, locked the door, we lined up again. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? The church wasn't down the street now. You, if you got left, you, hey, hey, you had to walk. Of course, I don't remember me being left. I, I, can't, I can talk about some other members in the family that did, but, you know, some folks just don't want to mind. Okay. So the wayward seed, this describes the seeds which fall or fell on ground, which laid on the soil. In other words, it is on top of it. But the first layer is bedrock. Some of y'all know about that. So the seeds grew but could not take root through the rock. Well, sir. I remember hearing that, that saying that a hard head produces a what? Oh, somebody been listening. <laughs> Saying that made me tighten up a little bit there. Verse 6. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since had no root, they withered away. When the sun rose, shined on the seeds, they were scorched. They were burnt up because the seeds had no roots, no system of water to reach, uh, to sustain it. Everybody understands uh, the sound uh, 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 of my voice when I say that, that, that in life you're going to experience some situations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, bad, ugly, and indifferent. Choose one. But because, but because God's in charge. If we render ourselves to him, we cover it. Now you ask the question, what about those that don't render it? They exist in. And time is short. Because God don't like ugly. And the more some people tell God no, the more treacherous and short their life gets. God is longevity. He wants us to live. He wants us to have an abundant life. He, he wants us to have joy. He wants us to have all the things he's blessed us with. But blessings are cut short when we are disobedient to God. We just came, we just came through uh, December, December, December. That's that that that's what man calls the, the the month where Christ Jesus was born. We 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 seen a lot of the uh, uh, the nativity scene uh, 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 displays. We went to some of the plays about the, uh, about the birth of Christ. We 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 heard the songs. Yes, sir. Now we're in the month of March, and and that's not even a a real thought anymore. Ask some of them bad kids, y'all. I'm sorry, some of y'all kids. <laughs> All right, baby kids. I mean. <laughs> Ask them where them toys at. M matter of fact, you bought them, go try to find them. I don't remember all the names of dogs, but Raggedy Andy, uh, Annie, I said Annie, that's the dude. <laughs> 
Hey, I, I didn't play with that. I don't know their name. I, I throw one out there. But, but, but where is Raggedy Andy? Probably pick Raggedy Andy. If, if Raggedy Andy's still in the house, pick it up with the arm torn off, head. <laughs> Lord have mercy. These are some of the things that causes us to, to wonder. We look at, we look at, we look at uh, how, how we uh, forget the birth of our, of our, uh, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in the month of December. But I would ask you if you'd be so kind to put on the screen Jeremiah 6 and 16. Jeremiah 6 and 16. And it reads as thus. Thus says the Lord, stand by the road and look and ask for the ancient path where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk in it. Sometimes we, we have to find that good old path. And we got to walk in it. And sometimes even as in our maturity right now, even in our ages right now, we, we forget the path yes, that God has set forth for us to walk in. Yeah, right. in, in other words, the, the path didn't change. The Bible says God changes not. So, so the person that changed, if you put your hand in front of you and, and talk to it, is you. You change. There was a book written some time ago that I, I believe is uh, entitled, Who Moved My Cheese? Yes. Who moved the cheese? Yes, sir. Cheese don't have legs and they get up and walk. If you got rats and you got some cheese down there, where well, the rat may move the cheese, but but what we're talking about talking about you, 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 you are the cheese, and and what moved you, either to the left or to the right, or just say what moved you from God's decision. I don't mind telling you for a number of years I, I was. Well, they used to say back when we were coming along, I used to do talks in the pulpit all the time. And then cause we had you know, seven other kids and the neighborhood kids. That come, and when we got out of church, we came home, got in the backyard, and I was preaching to them. If my sister was sitting here out here right now, she'd tell you what time, what time we was out there playing church or whatnot. And, and uh, she was acting like she had the Holy Ghost. And guess what showed up? I looked at it, I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> she was doing her swan thing, and then I said, hey. I'd never let her forget it. <laughs> I said, the power of the word, amen. amen. The power of the words. Wow. You are the way with seeds. You know someone that fell on stony ground, preventing roots from growing deeper, into the soil. We all know someone like that. Verse 7, other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. This seed is described as a thorny seed. Y'all have roses. Y'all know what happened when that, that, <laughs> that rose grew up in them thorns. You try to prune it and, and you get pruned. The seeds fell among the thorns, both grew up, but the thorns intervened and choked the seeds, killing it. We can have John 15, 19, please. John 15, 19. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but 
you were chose out of the world. Let me say that again. You were chose out of the world. See, 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 this is no coincidence that you're here this morning. This was a predestination that God made before the foundation. Of the world. He looked through time and said, yeah, you're going to be sitting right here in Chesterfield on this day that the Lord has made. And therefore, because the Lord chose you, the world hates you. And I'm here to tell you that there are some people that get up just as early as you do on Sunday and look out there to see if you go going to church. Yes, Miss the Sunday and see what they say to you. I thought you was a Christian. You didn't go to church. I had somebody tell it, and I'm a preacher. They, I was sick. And so I wasn't going to, to church. And some folks next door, about, well, you ain't go to church today. Of course, my kindly Christian response was, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you as a God seed, a spiritual seed, you as a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ, must stay in relationship with Jesus and study the word of God. Let us get 2 Timothy 2.15, 2 Timothy 2.15. Yeah, we know it. So, uh, we really don't have to read it, but I'm going to read it up there. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. I like the King James Version. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How many truths have you divided on yesterday and before? It's amazing. We, we, we're entering into March madness. Take off the march and everybody mad about something. Wait till the game start and they start scoring and your team don't get what they're supposed to get. And you come right here to Chesterfield and take it out on somebody. <laughs> well, put it this way, you a talk about them. <laughs> I was a witness, hey, man, when <laughs> ah, the team, they, did, they did win, they did win, they didn't win. Verse 8, other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain and some 100, some 60, and some 30. This seed is described as a spiritual seed. But other seeds fell into the good ground, brought forth or yielded fruit in the amount of hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Let us get Genesis 26, 12 to 13, please. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord, say it again, preacher. The Lord blessed him. And the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. Yes, sir. What you and I plant grows because the Lord blessed us to do so. What we speak into other people's lives from a God perspective is blessing. The thing of it is, is the receiving of it. See, 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 you, you a Christian, you, you, you got the God talk conversation going on. You can say all this kind of stuff. But if a person does not want to receive that, what you give, it would do them no good. But the thing you have to remember, you did what the Lord told you to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have been involved with young peoples and mentoring and, 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 and was a youth pastor and, and, and on and on. And, and sometimes you wonder, did what you taught, what you teach, what you led, what you example, did it, did it mean anything to the young person? Well, sir. Then 
one day a young person came up to me that I used to be hard on. He said, why was you hard on her? Sometimes people are knuckleheads. Didn't have a father in the home. and Mom had the revolving door with men. And so the boy was confused. Yes, sir. Only time he would hear someone speak life into him was when he came to church. Well, and that was my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when I would teach or say something, he would say a shout out something negative. Shut up. He wasn't possessed. <laughs> He was just crazy. <laughs> and I, I will, just in case he groaned looking at the video, I won't call his name. <laughs> so one day, he got to be a teenager and, and whatnot, and he called me. He said, Red? I said, yeah, hi, what's going on? He said, I want to tell you something. You know, and that mean look on his face, whatnot. I'm thinking, oh, he's going to go crazy. I'm going to have to set him, set him down. Either set him down or knock him down. Like one of the two was going to happen. But anyhow, he said, you know all that stuff you was teaching me all them years and whatnot? I said, yeah, that was, that was the word. He said, I was listening. I said, you were? It surprised me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he said, you know what? Although I had this mean and ugly and stuff and talk back to you and all that, he said, you know what? I still believed in Jesus. I would even read my Bible. I said, you got one? I ain't never seen you. Well, he said, I got a Bible. I said, all right. He said, but I just want to say one thing to you. I said, okay. Thank you. He said, you didn't put me down. You didn't kick me out the class. You didn't, you didn't, you know, choke me out in the class. Thought about it, but I didn't. <laughs> he said, you let me sit there, and then you just say, shut up. And I would say his name. He said, but I would go leave, leave church, and I would think about all that stuff you said. He said, and, and a lot of what you said helped me not to do something like take my life. Thank you, Lord. Never had the idea that this young man would even contemplate suicide. But sometimes we have to continue to speak life into young people, even adults. Speak life. speak life. Give them God's word. Don't give them your mind. Give them God's word because that is what's going to help them. Yes. Verse 8. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some hundredfold, sixtyfold. We said that. In John 15, 16 to 17, can we get that? John 15, 16 to 17. All right, well, I'll read. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that what whatever you ask the father in my name he may give it to you these things I command you so that you will love one another yes. God chose us uh, scripture even talks about he chose us while we was yet in our mother's womb yes. he, ca hey, he called you yes, and when you was born the Lord just continued to speak into you through people, through through you reading the word. God, God talked to you, amen. And 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 and, and I remember uh, reading in uh, uh, Adam Clayton Powell book when he talked about when he received a call and it was a wintry, snowy day, and he looked out the window and 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 a quiet voice spoke to him, soft voice. Calling him to choose to be a preacher. Now, later down the road, he, he was terrible. But yeah. in, as they say, in the initial phase of ministry, he was all right. Amen. Verse 9, and we, we're getting ready to come on down 
and around the bend. Uh, he who has ear, let him hear. This message is for you, me, and them. We, we, we have a charge to keep and a, and a guard to glorify. This ain't a time to sit down on your, on your, on, on, on your humpty dumpty, your rear end, and your butts, and there, whatever else you call that thing back there, and, and not talk and speak life into young people, young adults, minds, hearts, and life because the devil is busy and his mission is never changed. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. But as I come to a close, the holy seed of God the Father was, was pregnated into uh, the Virgin Mary. She, she, she birthed a son, and his name is Jesus Christ. This holy seed uh, began uh, to grow, and it at the age of 12, uh, Jesus was found in the temple, somebody. I believe we all read it, but uh, he was found in the temple. He wasn't sitting down and trying to figure out which way is up, uh, but he uh, was teaching the, the rabbis and, and the Bible said the doctors uh, and he was teaching them about the kingdom of God. How many of you take the charge uh, to talk about Jesus uh, wherever you are? This same Jesus uh, at the age uh, of, 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 of 30 uh, came uh, to his cousin uh, John the Baptist uh, to get baptized uh, and John told him uh, I don't have a uh, the right to do this thing. You calling me uh, to baptize you, but I need you uh, to baptize me. But Jesus told him, suffer it to be so. I can only imagine when he went down in the Jordan River, he went down, I tell you. He didn't get sprinkled with water, but he went down. And I believe that we call it a watery grave. Because you go down and the water covers everything. But when he came up, oh Lord, when he came up, Lord God, when he came up, I believe that heaven opened. A voice spoke and said, This is my beloved son. He Jesus, my Savior. But that ain't the end of the story. They tell me for three more years, he preached the gospel. He preached the kingdom of God. Somebody ought to hear me. But let me tell you something. That wasn't enough for man. Man accused him of blasphemy. Man accused him of sedition. Man accused him of messing with his money. Oh, Lord. Anytime you mess with a man's money, he going to get mad. I'm here to tell you, mess with my money, and I'm going to get mad. But Jesus wasn't guilty of none of that. They brought him in front of these. We will call him a kangaroo court. But Jesus stood there, heard the accusation, didn't say a word, but he did give them the word they gave him. You said, are you the king of the Jews? What did Jesus say? You said. Well, let me tell you something about Jesus. He went all the way. They whipped him. They beat him. They spit on him. They talked about him. Oh, Lord. I only can think about his mother, Mary, looking at her son, having all this done to him. Her heart was broken. Her mind was heavy. She was feeling the, the same pain. Good God Almighty. But let me tell you something. They sentenced him to death. They said, you're going to hang. You're going to be crucified. And they took him to that old rugged cross. Hung him on the cross. Between two thieves. You don't see Jesus. But open up your spiritual eyes. Take a look what they did to my Jesus. Oh, Lord. They hung him on the cross. They put nails in his hands. Good God Almighty. They put nails in his feet. Oh, Lord. I feel the pain. Ow! Help me, Jesus. They took a sword, stuck it inside. Jesus. 
Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I tell you what. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. Didn't have no breath in his body. They took him down from the cross. They put him in a barred tomb. Let me tell you about a barred tomb. Anything barred gonna be returned. Jesus was put there on a Friday afternoon. All day sat in, all day sat in night. But early, early I tell you, early Sunday morning, I hear my Jesus. Yes, Lord, I hear him say, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That ain't the end of the story. This same Jesus walked out of that tomb. He met men. He met women. Yes, Lord. He met his disciples one time. There's only 11 of them there. You know the one missing? Downtown. And uh, I'm about to sit down. They told Thomas, Jesus is still living. Thomas made a bold statement. And that statement is, until I see him, until I see the, the nail prints in his hands, until I see uh, the nail prints in his feet, uh, good God Almighty, I'm running down to the last minute now. Jesus came in. The door wouldn't open. But he came through the door. Yes, Lord. And he greeted the disciples. And he told Thomas, repeated the words that he said. Jesus said, can you believe now? Thomas said, I believe. Jesus told us through his word that it's alive today. You who haven't seen me in this flesh shall believe. My brothers and sisters, we are the seeds which believe. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Hallelujah. Let us stand. After hearing such a powerful message coming from God uh, through Dr. King, uh, there may be one here this morning who's out of the ark of safety, who do not know Jesus in the free pardon of his or her sins. If that is the case, come by letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. Uh, give Christ a chance in your life. Is there one? Come. As his great priest seems to run this election. Is there one? Come, come. Come by letter, Christian experience, our candidate for baptism. Saying, saying. We offer, we offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. We offer, we offer Christ to you. Is there one? Is there one? Come. Give Christ a chance in your life. Abundantly. Oh, come. Oh, come. Come. Come on. Come to Christ. Maybe seated. Let's give God some praise for He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Turn to your neighbors and neighbor. The seeds of life. What a mighty God. Uh, we serve just a couple of things very quickly. First of all, let us be mindful that we will be staying here in the sanctuary uh, for our uh, small group uh, events uh, that is here in the sanctuary this week as well as next week. 
And I encourage those of you who do not go to small groups, come. Uh, you have something to offer and you have, you have something to receive. So we encourage you to do that. Also, let's be mindful to pray for our sick and our shut-in. Uh, there are a lot of sick folk, not only here, but all over. Uh, also, let us, um, uh, let's thank uh, Timo and the men's ministry for doing uh, the first, uh, the first uh, barn fire here at Chesapeake for the boys uh, community. Let's give uh, those who came, did an elephant job. Well, thank you for your presence. Uh, it is never too, uh, is never, we should never be too busy to take time out to deal with our, and to help our young boys. Uh, someone took time out with us, and that's why we are where we are. In fact, uh, we didn't do all that we should have done. Uh, we just hadn't gotten caught doing the things that they've got caught doing, and maybe somewhere the way they ought not. But as uh, Reverend King said, Dr. King, uh, God did not send, her here to, send us here to judge anyone. He sent us here to help and to serve one another. So let's be mindful of that. Also, on next, um, on next um, uh, Saturday, we'll have our uh, men's, um, men's ministry prep breakfast at 8 a.m. is the screenings from 8 to 9. There will be screenings from 8 to 9. So please don't eat until after your screenings. 8 to 9 in the conference center, uh, 8 to 9. And at 9 o'clock, our uh, prep breakfast will start. Our keynote speaker is one of our very own, uh, Joshua Kinney. Joshua Kinney is our very own, and he will be our keynote speaker for the men's prayer breakfast. It is a community prayer breakfast, so let us be mindful. And every man, every male in this church, we expect to see you here, whether you are a teenager, or whether you are a male child, we want you to come uh, and let us share in the uh, quarterly uh, men's prayer breakfast. Let us, we're going to do something in a minute very quickly. We're going to go a little longer. Group won't take your time from your group. Uh, small group will run over a little bit, but let us be mindful uh, of those things. Also, the announcements will be played there. There was a glitch. Uh, they'll be played at the 10 a.m. Uh, worship experience. Uh, today's Youth Sunday, and we have some amazing youth here. Uh, the speaker has been chosen for the youth message. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a great message, great youth. So we're grateful for that. Thank God for Ed Robertson and the youth staff and the youth team and the youth parents. Thank God for each and every one of you. Also, uh, there are, let us remember to pray for, and we're going to do that before we leave here this morning, uh, pray for Dr. Gamble and his wife, Lada Ne. Uh, on last Sunday, I was not here at the second service because I, I went to a uh, service at his church 31st pastoral appreciation which I was on to preach for the last three years or so but that's not the only reason I went I could have uh, not gone uh, because the women's day of course wasn't scheduled uh, back then in March it was scheduled in May but we had an exciting service on last week at the early service and I viewed the uh, Facebook for the first time of the second service uh, Linda Cheatham and uh, uh, Dr. Beach did an elephant job along with the uh, greatest choir, women's choir. Give them a big hand. They did an elephant job. Let us thank committee. Let us thank Ms. Pat uh, and Ms. Pat Hickman along with the committee for doing an elephant job. Uh, things just keep on getting better. What a mighty God we serve. So I was there. Uh, but one of the reasons I felt uh, um, to go more than anything is his wife is uh, uh, they'll be going to New York tomorrow uh, to try to get her on clinical uh, trials. Um, they're at one of the three best cancer hospitals in the country. And if they can't get there, then they're scheduled to go next Monday to Houston, uh, one of the, another one of the top three cancer hospitals in the country. Uh, so Norman's my best friend, and he needed me more than ever, not just to preach, uh, but he needed me there uh, to be with him. And I will see him again this week, saw him last week. Also, we'll see him when he gets back. Or uh, uh, I may even take the trip with him to Houston. I'm going to have to drive. Uh, but he's going to fly. I'm going to leave two days early. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we've got to do what we do to help. So let us, let us we're going to pray for Lanane and Norman before we leave. And not only Lanane, but we're going to pray for uh, Nicole. There's Nicole here. Nicole, we're going to pray for her and what she's going through. Also, we're going to pray for um, 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 Tim Vereen and Maurice. Uh, let everybody come on. Uh, Maurice, what's Maurice's last name? Vault. Uh, pray for him. He just received his kidneys, uh, kidney or kidneys, I'm not sure, one or two, 
but he has a kidney, he has kidney or kidneys. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we need to pray for them. Uh, what I'm going to request that we do this morning, uh, those that would like to, we're going to take up an offering uh, for those four people. Um, and uh, they didn't ask it, and, and, uh, and, and they don't know we're doing it unless they're viewing, viewing. If you want to do that, fine. If you don't, we understand. Uh, but we're going to ask uh, that uh, the ushers will, uh, we're going to ask that the choir will give us a selection. And we're going to ask that those that would like to give, if you want to make a check out, make it out to Chesterfield, we make sure it goes where it needs to go. I'm going to start the offering up with $100 uh, for my wife and myself. It's not much. Uh, but we, we, we'll give more to Dr. Gamble and to those other individuals as well. So uh, music's quiet. Please, hurry me get that $100 out. Amen. So those that would like to give, and then we'll come back and pray. We're going to ask that all clergy will come to the, to the altar for the prayer. We're going to ask that all clergy will come to the altar and, and uh, let us pray all clergy who's able to come. Give and I give it back to you. Give and I give it back to you. Give and I give it back to you. Press down, shake it together, running over. And with great measure, give and I'll give it back to you. Give, give. Give and I give it back to you. Give and I give it back to you. Press down. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. And with great measure. Give 